We beat Alabama for the conference championship my sophomore year that I started and got 12, 12 or 14 points. And uh, Coach Cookie Grommeyer had broken his leg. And uh, the, there was a fight before the game between the players. Dan Chandler. Dan Chandler. Dan Chandler. Now, the trivia question is, could you name who started it for Alabama? I'll tell you, you can't. They had a substitute. Jerry Harper was the center. From Lloyd. From Lloyd. Substitute center was named Rex Bogan from Chicago. And he dared Dan Chandler to step across midcourt. And Dan went for it. And boom, fight starts. Football team comes pouring out of the stands. Naturally, it got broken up. And the, the, the crowd was incredible that night. You know, Happy was governor then. Well, he, he was. Yeah. And we ended up beating them. It was a great win, and they carried us off the floor. And my picture was in the Lexington paper the next day, and it showed how Kentucky was misspelled on my jersey. And yeah, that's the first time people noticed it. But that was a, a proud and happy moment. Just coming out the tunnel, man, onto the floor in Rupp Arena, man, and hearing the crowd cheer you on, and just excitement in the air, man. It's just unbelievable. It's, I've been to a lot of different arenas and experienced that, but it's no comparison, man, and that's one of the, my deepest memories of how joyful and the people with embrace you, and mm, it's just awesome, man, awesome feeling. i never forget. Probably just being successful, being, we were in NCAA each year that, that I was at the University of Kentucky. And uh, you had to have won the SEC and, and stuff to, to have gotten there. So, and that gave the publicity and the status for coaches and players. Uh, of course, winning a national championship is, uh, is obviously what it's all about. I mean, that's why you go to school there and uh, play at a school like Kentucky. So I would have to say uh, winning a national championship. It was back in 93, the uh, lead eight game against Florida State, and uh, hit a three-point shot, the only one I took during the year in the game. Now, I shot hundreds during practice, but uh, everybody was saying, hey, Todd, when are you going to shoot a three? And the opportunity game came against Florida State, and uh, Rasso kicked it on the top of the key to the right wing, and uh, nothing but net. So one for one in UK history. So that was probably the most exciting time uh, that I can think of playing in the NCAA tournament and uh, just being around Coach Rupp and the things he would say. And, you know, he had one favorite saying, he'd say, boys, go out there and do the best you can. The folks back home will appreciate it. That's well said. <laughs> That's a, that was his big, big saying, you know. He did always smack those hands together. You know. <laughs> I remember we were playing Cincinnati. And they weren't too good at that time. And Adolph called me. See, I was just 17, turned 18 and went in the Army in about a month. And he called me over, and I thought I was going in with about eight or nine minutes to go. But he let me sit there with about five minutes to go. And he says, Derrickson, you go in there and play defense, and if you shoot the damn ball, you're coming out. <laughs> we, uh, we were playing uh, Indiana up in Louisville at the Old Armory. And uh, we went over toward the game. Would you believe we spent the night when we played in Louisville? We did. And so uh, we come to the downstairs at the Armory and there was a place the team could go. We was waiting on a high school game, preliminary, and Adolph uh, we, uh, we came in and a guy that I played with at Lafayette named Singh Heary. And he was laughing. See, you weren't supposed to do any of that stuff. And he walked in, and Yuri was laughing. And Adolf says, Yuri, what's so funny? The only reason I brought you over here is to carry the balls over to the gym. <laughs> but see, I wasn't supposed to be funny. It's the last thing. You, but sometimes when you're listening to Adolf, you have to kind of put your hand in front of your face. Because he, he was, he's funny and didn't intend to be that funny. But I think he knew he was. But when, before a game or any time, even in practice, he didn't like any distraction. He, first day out there, he says, 
I see somebody out here is whistling. He said, if you want to whistle, you go to the music department. It's just across the campus. <laughs> and in the national championship, 1958. 1958. We had nine seniors on the team. I didn't get to play, but I was on the team. <laughs> when we went to the uh, Mid-East region, uh, I was a junior and uh, wasn't a starter. We got to play, and, uh, but that was so, sort of the high, high moment of, uh, of our, our, our team. We, we had a good year that year, but uh, at that time, you could only go to the NCAA if you won the SEC championship, and we won the championship. And so that, that was an interesting and, and good moment. My greatest day at Kentucky was my first day at Kentucky. For years, I had listened to the University of Kentucky play basketball on the radio. I had loved the Fabulous Five. I'd loved Spivey and all those guys, but only from the radio. I was lucky enough to get a scholarship to UK, and nobody in my hometown of Maysville actually believed I'd ever get to play, but I went anyway. My dad was a construction worker in Maysville and he had to borrow his boss's car so we could drive to Lexington for me to go to college. I took my clothes in two grocery bags from Brown's, from Brown's grocery store. And, uh, See you, okay, buddy. and when we got to, uh, when we got to Lexington, uh, they directed us to go to, in front of uh, this certain dorm hall. And there on the bank said all the UK ball players that I've heard about. All of the great ones, Ramsey, Hagen, Sharopoulos, Billy Evans, Limbo Puckett. Uh, I'm afraid I could go on and on. But anyway, they were sitting on the bank and my dad pulled up. And I told my dad, I said, do you mind pulling up a little bit more? Uh, I, I don't want those guys to see us. And he said, no, we're going to get out right here. So he got out and he un opened the trunk of the car. My mother didn't get out. My dad came around. And I went around to get my clothes out. And about that time, here come all these ball players, Ramsey, Hagen, Sharopoulos, and they were grabbing my sacks. And in fact, one of them, Sharopoulos said to me, uh, where's your suitcases? And I said, uh, well, uh, I I'm not sure I'm gonna stay. Uh, that, this is all I've brought. Well, hell, it's all I had in the world. But I felt like asking for autographs all these guys that had come down to get my suitcases. And they were then and are now, those that are still living, friends of mine, and I'll cherish that and remember that is the greatest day of my life and my greatest day at UK.